Welcome to Watchman Review. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is a little more personal. A friend recently expressed confusion regarding teachings given him by the Mormon faith, teachings which were illogical to him. When shared, I too decided to perform a little research of my own. Nick, this video is dedicated to you and all current and potential Mormons out there, and believe me, the evidence is shocking. Let me show you what I see. Is there any historical evidence for the Book of Mormon? Because Joseph Smith made such an effort to bolster his religious claims with physical proof of their history, this question deserves a careful answer. His first evidence was the golden plates, seen only by himself and 11 witnesses. But in 1838, witness Martin Harris publicly admitted that none of the witnesses had physically seen the plates. They had only seen them in a vision. Three of the 12 apostles immediately left the church. But Smith did not give up on trying to produce physical evidence for his stories. He identified a hill in New York as the site of two cataclysmic battles, but no evidence has been found, a pile of stones in Missouri as the altar of the biblical Adam, again no evidence, a skeleton as a Lamanite warrior, no evidence, Egyptian papyri and the kinderhook plates as ancient records supporting his translation claims, the evidence here shows he could not have been more wrong, and he labeled Native Americans as Lamanites, ancient Jews from the Book of Mormon but extensive DNA and cultural studies have found no evidence. After obtaining permission from the current Native Americans that live in those areas, we were able to um, take the bones to lab, extract some DNA, and actually those bones turned out to be so well preserved that we were able to reconstruct the complete genome, the complete blueprint of that individual. What we found was that when we looked at that blueprint, um, that individual was definitely Asian. There was no sign of any European DNA, of any European signature. See, the Book of Mormon supposedly records a time period between 600 BC and 421 AD. Uh, the problem with that is it records horses and cows and oxen and asses and all kinds of things in the Americas that didn't show up until they were brought here by the Europeans. Silk is listed as being found in America when actually the silkworm uh, moths that produce it hadn't been introduced from Asia quite yet. Now that's in 1 Nephi chapter 13 verse 7. In fact, Thomas Stuart Ferguson, the head of the only church-sponsored archaeological study meant to prove the Book of Mormon, lost his faith as a result of finding nothing. Why does the Book of Mormon say that the Son of God, Jesus, was born in Jerusalem, that's in Alma chapter 7 verse 10, instead of Bethlehem? Bethlehem in Hebrew means literally the house of bread. Jesus is the bread of life. He could have been born no other place and fulfilled the prophecy of Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Why does the Book of Mormon say that darkness would cover the earth for three days at Christ's death on the cross? That's in uh, Helaman uh, 14, 20 and 27 and 3 Nephi 8, verse 3. And actually the Bible says it was three hours in Luke 23, 44. Doctrine and Covenants, section 130, verse 22. God the Father has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's. Jesus said God is spirit in John chapter 4, verse 24. Then defining a spirit, he said later on in Luke 24, 39, a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. The LDS Church claims that Joseph Smith will judge us in the final judgment. Brigham Young, the second president and prophet of the church, wrote, No man or woman in this dispensation will ever enter into the celestial kingdom of God without the consent of Joseph Smith. Every man and woman must have the certificate of Joseph Smith, Jr. as a passport to their entrance into the mansion where God and Christ are. Joseph Smith reigns there as supreme a being in his sphere, capacity, and calling as God does in heaven. Who is the God of the Mormons? Is he the same God as in the Bible? Let's compare. The God that Joseph Smith and his successors taught is a man, of the same race as we are, who, although he did sin, earned his Godhood while living on a planet just like we do. The Christian God is not a man or even like one, has existed eternally unchanged, and has thus never sinned. The Mormon God used to worship, and is still subservient to, the God of the planet he came from. 
The god of that planet also came from another planet under a different god, who came from another planet under a different god, so on and so forth into eternity. And by practicing Mormonism to its fullest, men on earth can carry on this process, becoming the same kind of god. The Christian god is totally sovereign in his power, subservient to no one, and certainly no link in an eternal god-making chain. He says, I am the first and I am the last, besides me there is no god, and before me no god was formed, nor shall there be any after me. It couldn't be any more clear. The Mormon concept of God, however, is still the same as it's always been. It's similar to Hinduism. They are actually polytheistic. They believe in many gods. And if that were not bad enough, they also believe they're going to become gods. One popular quote from Mormon prophet Lorenzo Snow is, quote, As man is, God once was. As God is, man may become. One Mormon book of scripture called Pearl of Great Price contradicts the Bible by claiming there are many gods who formed the earth, and that's in Abraham chapter 4. While the Bible clearly states that there is only one God, quote, Before me there was no God formed, and there will be none after me. That's out of Isaiah chapter 43.10 and 44.6. Satan also claimed that man could become like gods through eating the forbidden fruit, and that brought a curse on man and got him driven out of the Garden of Eden. That's in Genesis chapter 3, verses 5 through 24. The God of Mormonism worked his way to Godhood. He was originally a man and he worked his way to Godhood. Which, which you are also as a Mormon encouraged to do and told is possible that you work toward this Right, the purpose of going to the mm -hmm. temple, one of the purposes of going to the Mormon temple is for priesthood members, males, to work them, themselves to become gods, mm -hmm. yes. Do you believe you're going to become a god one day? Yeah. Why? It is in the scriptures and the prophets have told Where? us. It's all throughout the scriptures. Where? If you really want to know, I guess you could search the scriptures yourselves. But. You know, the Bible actually says in Isaiah 43.10, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Joseph taught that there were gods before God and you could become one one day. Yeah. The scriptures condemn that. And you're on your mission telling people about a God and a gospel that's contrary to the scriptures. Then again, the Bible has been translated multiple times, and through that, many things have become lost. Joseph Smith, the founder and so-called prophet of the LDS Church, was a Freemason. He even founded a Masonic Lodge in 1842 in Nauvoo, Illinois. Smith remained a Freemason until his death. Why is this significant? For several reasons, the very idea of a secret society is counterproductive to the teachings of the Bible. This is reflected in John chapter 18 verse 20 where Jesus said, In secret have I said nothing. Also, Joseph Smith seemed to have borrowed from Freemasonry when developing the Mormon religion because the temple ordinances, specifically the endowment session, employ ritual elements that have similarities to those that are performed in Masonic lodges, including secret handshakes and the type of clothing worn. Here is an example of a Masonic handshake alongside a Mormon handshake. As you can see, they are identical. Not to mention, there are quite a few Masonic symbols found on and in the Mormon temple in Utah. Here is the all-seeing eye. Here is a Masonic handshake, and here are a couple of inverted pentagrams. My guides on this tour are two of the church's 12 apostles, top officials who are believed to be prophets, seers, and revelators, Elder Russell Ballard. We know the voice of the Lord. We know when he wants us to do something. They were willing to discuss their rituals to a point, but they would not address rumors of things like secret handshakes. You're not supposed to talk about the details. We don't, of we don't, we don't get into the details of, uh, of that. You're going through a uh, process that which taken out of context can uh, seem unusual or different, but if in the whole context doesn't seem that way at all. One indication we have uh, as an insight into Joseph Smith's character 
is the value he placed in a particular magic object called a Jupiter's talisman that he had had through his life. We aren't sure just when he first got it, but evidently as a teenager. But he kept it on his person until his death. And a Jupiter's talisman is a magic object that one would use to uh, empower one with uh, money, finances, uh, power over people, power over women. All of these things were items Joseph's life was geared towards. He wanted power, he wanted money, and he wanted women. Uh, the fact that he died with the Jupiter talisman on his body shows that throughout his life he continued to hang on to that hope and that trust in that magic object. You are now looking at the room where the faithful stand in that pool, which is heated and chlorinated, and are baptized in the name of the dead so that they can have the option of converting to Mormonism in the afterlife. Those oxen on the side of the pool represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Spiritism is the belief that you can communicate with the dead. Mormons receive messages from the dead, pray for the dead, have baptisms for the dead, and even believe that the dead can be assisted and even saved in the next life. Now, holding contact with the spirits of the dead is forbidden in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 through 12, because those spirits are really demons in disguise who desire to mislead us. When the Christian uses the word cult, Christian, not generally speaking, when the Christian uses the word cult, a cult is generally defined as that which claims to be rooted in historic Christianity, but has deviated or abandoned the finished work of Christ or compromised on his person. That's the definition. Why would most Mormons not have read the New Testament? Because I think a lot of Mormons consider themselves to be Christians. So yeah. how, how does the Bible get left out of that? Mormons have four standard works or scriptures. The Bible is one of the four, but they don't believe that it's translated correctly, that it's sometimes mistranslated. And so they don't trust the Bible, but they trust their other three sources above the Bible. So people in Mormonism would have read the Bible, but if it bumps up against Mormon doctrine, you say that's not translated Well, and when correctly. you've got four different books you're working from, if you feel three are more in line with what you believe, you probably yeah. spend more time yeah. in those. I would ask Mormons to read the New Testament in context from one end to the other. Like a child. Like a child. Mm -hmm. Like you don't know anything and you want God to teach you and see what God does with your life. Today, if you talk to an average Mormon around the table, he said, no, I, I, I follow Jesus Christ. And then you bring all the other doctrines that I've added on, and some of them get very uncomfortable with what it is, the Adam-God doctrine, the celestial marriage, the doctrine and the covenants, the pearl of great price, and uh, all of these other additions that were brought in there. I think that it is critical we understand that, the, that Jesus said we are complete in him. And when you add or detract, you can give yourself whatever name you want, but you're impugning the completed work of Christ on the cross. Okay, so there are other titles that one can give to those faiths, but it is not historic Christianity at that point. 